Cole Wright. The moment is here. It's finally upon us. Super Bowl 57 kicking off this Sunday. It's been a long, hard grind to get us to this point all the way back at the end of July when training camps open to here now in February. We got two teams left. Your champions of the AFC, the Kansas City Chiefs, and the champions of the NFC, your Philadelphia Eagles. This should be a fantastic football game. It's a really interesting matchup. It's kind of crazy, some of these stats, how truly even these two teams are. It's going to be a game for the ages, I think. But let's get into it. Let's start breaking this bad boy down. Okay, first things first. Can the infrastructure of this country handle if the Eagles win the Super Bowl this year? I mean, let's be honest. We saw the insane scenes after the 2018 win. Are we equipped to handle another Eagles victory? Because these fans are honestly out of their damn minds. They make everybody's life a living hell. Welcome to Philly! Welcome to Philly! Luckily, it's a neutral site game, so the Kansas City faithful will be out and about loud and proud. We know Arrowhead as good of a home field as it is at the link, so these are two crazy fan bases, which could get a little heated here. I'm not super worried about if the Chiefs win the Super Bowl. I am quite concerned if the Eagles do, what the ramifications are from a safety standpoint. But let's get into the actual game now. Let's get into the players breaking this thing down. Let's start off with the biggest mismatch, I think, of the game, and it's at the quarterback position. Now, do not get me wrong. I am a big Jalen Hurts believer. He has taken massive steps this season. I mean, a lot of people doubted him. Look, he was benched in college at Alabama, had to transfer to Oklahoma, was a second-round pick, but people didn't really necessarily know if he could be a true passer in the NFL at an elite level, and he has taken massive steps this season, and this offense has soared literally and figuratively, all season long. The question remains, though, what is the health of Hurts' shoulder? He banged up his right throwing shoulder at the end of the regular season. He missed a couple of games, but he's looked good in his two playoff games. But he hasn't really had to look anything spectacular. They blew out the Giants, and then the 49ers, they didn't have a quarterback, so it made life real easy. They did struggle a bit early in that game, after a nice opening drive touchdown on a fourth down drop that they did not get challenged, they struggled most of that sec uh, first half. Late in the second quarter, their defense got a turnover, put them on a short field. They got two quick touchdowns, and it really put that game away. So they haven't been forced to do anything. Hurts, in particular, hasn't been forced to do anything. So we just don't know. He looks healthy, but who knows? Now, you got to think about it. Three playoff games for Jalen Hurts, only a 92 quarterback rating. Not the best, and he really has struggled throwing the ball, moving to his right with that right shoulder. Kind of interesting stat to look at here. Has not been great in his last three games when coming back, throwing the ball. But hey, if they can run the football, it's going to be a very successful day for the Eagles. Jalen Hurts, big question mark here. He's been great all year. He's really developed as a passer, but he's just not there. Now let's go on the other side. Patrick Mahomes, the man, your reigning MVP, he just brought home on Friday night. So he is cooking this season. The offense has been so good. It's absolutely crazy. Both teams have scored 546 points on the season. Both teams ranked number one in offense in points per game. So they are as even as you can get. Mahomes is the man. He's the best quarterback on planet Earth, and he's probably going to be for a long, long time. Now, he also has an injury concern, and that's his ankle. He got his ankle rolled up in the divisional round against the Jaguars, but he looked pretty good two weeks ago against the Bengals. He's been all clear these weeks of practice. Andy Reid says he's not 100%, but there is no limitations in the playbook, which is absolutely huge. Mahomes is at his best when he can scramble and create magic, getting the ball downfield, buying time, creating massive plays, and if he can't do that, it's going to be a problem because he's going to be under duress. Now, the Chiefs' offensive line has been solid. Creed Humphrey is one of the best centers in the game. They don't give up a lot of sacks, but they're going up against the best pass rush in the National Football League. It's absolutely crazy. If you look at their pass rush sack rate, win rate, the Eagles, number one in the NFL, the gap between them and second, 
the Dallas Cowboys is the same as the gap between the Cowboys and the 23rd ranked team. So the Eagles are just absolutely out of their damn minds when getting after the quarterback, and they do it from all spots on the D-line. They got four guys in double digits with sacks, led by Hassan Reddick. What an absolutely spectacular pickup this past offseason. So the Chiefs offensive line are going to have their hands full, and if they can force Mahomes to have to run and get after him, he could be a little awkward. Maybe he tweaks the ankle. We saw him start to fade at the end of that Bengals game with his ankle health, so that could be a big issue for them. But if Mahomes is all right, it's a real, real problem for everybody. Best quarterback on the planet. He will make plays. So that's an interesting matchup. I mean, honestly, the Eagles are probably better at every other positional group in this game. But the Chiefs at quarterback, it's just so important. And they feel that much better than the Eagles. But flipping it around, Chiefs defensive pass rush has been really damn good also. Eagles offensive line, one of the best in the biz, if not the best in the biz. Jason Kelsey, future Hall of Famer at center. Lane Johnson, possibly a Hall of Famer at right tackle. It's a great group. And Chris Jones has been the game wrecker in the middle for the Kansas City Chiefs. So Kelsey's going to have to bring his A game. He usually does, but he's definitely going to have to do it today. But the Chiefs did a great job against the Bengals. Now, I know it was a terrible offensive line and they were banged up. But they did a great job of setting the edges and not letting Burrow to escape the pocket. And when he has to step up and avoid... He goes right into that interior pass rush where the Chiefs absolutely thrive. So they're going to have to do a similar game plan against the Eagles because we know Hurts is dangerous with his legs. Man squats 600 pounds. He's the best in short yardage running. He's also pretty good at regular yardage running. So Hurts loves to roll out of the pocket. He loves to create with his legs. They like to put defenses in awkward positions. So if they do a good job of setting that edge and forcing him to step up into the pocket, I think the Chiefs can have some success, relatively speaking, against this good offensive line. Now, the running games. Chiefs don't run the football. When they do, they're okay, but they're probably not going to be running the ball much this game. Eagles defensive front, pretty good at stopping the run. Chiefs just don't run the football. I would like to see Pacheco and McKinnon get some carry just to keep the Eagles on their heels a little bit. You can't let that pass rush tee off. Eagles, on the other hand, they live and die by their run game. This is a super run-heavy team. Tops in the league at running percentage. They pound the rock. Chiefs as a whole, though, not bad against the run as a defense. They can stop the running game. Problem is, most teams don't even try to run the ball against the Chiefs because their secondary has been bad. So this could be an interesting spot here. If the Chiefs take away the Eagles' run game and force the Eagles to throw the football. This is where you get a very interesting matchup. A bad secondary for the Chiefs, but they did an excellent job two weeks ago against Jamar Chase and T. Higgins as your top two receivers. Hey, Eagles are bringing that kind of smoke too. They got A.J. Brown. They got Devontae Smith. The big difference here is I don't think they're going to be able to double both of them like they did against Cincinnati because the Eagles have no problem throwing to Dallas Goddard at the tight end spot. Hurts loves throwing to Goddard, and the Bengals really didn't do that. They don't really do that in their offense, and so that could be a spot where the Eagles can take big advantage of a suspect pass coverage. The key here, you got to get after Hurts. If he has time to throw, this could be a very long day for the Chiefs fans because the Chiefs secondary is bad. I mean, if you look at them, they give up a ton of penalties. They get beat. They give up big chunk plays, big chunk yardage on the penalty front also, and let's not skip around this. Carl Sheffers is ref in this game. He absolutely hates the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, the numbers are ridiculous. He refed two Chiefs games this year. That was 20% of the Chiefs penalties on the entire season. That's ridiculous for just two games out of a 17-game season. And let's not forget the last Super Bowl Sheffers worked was the Chiefs versus the Buccaneers, where he threw a Super Bowl record eight penalties against the Chiefs in the first half. Chelsea called him out in 2017. And it's been a disaster ever since. So the Eagles can take a nice advantage here because I have no doubt that there are going to be some calls going against the Chiefs. I mean, they call a lot of penalties as it is, but the Eagles are a very disciplined team. Do not get me wrong. They don't tend to commit many penalties, so that just really is an extra edge to them. So we got an interesting offensive matchup. Eagles might be forced to throw the ball against a bad team. Can they do it? Can the Chiefs protect against that Eagles defense? It's really interesting. Let's look at their weapons, though. We know Mahomes is throwing to the best tight end of the game in Travis Kelsey. Maybe the best tight end ever when it's all said and done. So the Eagles are going to have to take him away. They're going to focus heavy on him. They're going to force these kind of mediocre receivers to step up. And the Eagles have the two, two of the best corners 
in the league. Maybe the best secondary pairing in football with Slay and Bradbury. I mean, they lock things down. And let's not sleep on C.J. Gardner-Johnson. The whole back end for Philly is lights out. And these receivers are just like, they leave a lot to be desired with Kansas City. MVS Marquez valdez Scantling has been very good in big games. He's not a number one wide receiver, though. We don't know if Juju's playing. Kadarius Tony was cleared in practice, full participant, so that helps a lot. But the problem is, he can hit one play, go for 80 yards, and then he's out for the game with a broken leg. You just don't know. He seems to be always banged up and hurt. Expect the rookie Sky Moore to have a little bit more of an impact this week. He kind of got some more PT against the Bengals, and he did all right. He had a big punt return at the end of that game, so maybe he's feeling confident. Look at the running backs. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire is back in. McKinnon might be lining up out at wide receiver. He's been great catching the football. They might have to do some more creative things to get the guys to their weapons because the secondary is great for Philly. They're not going to have the most time in the world, but I absolutely trust Andy Reid to be drawing up something really good here. And let's talk about coaching and experience. Andy Reid, it's going to be his fourth Super Bowl, third with the Chiefs, and it's all been within, what, the last four years, three in the last four years, for the Chiefs. This is a very experienced coaching staff. Nick Sirianni, on the other hand, he's a baby. He's fresh out the womb. I think this is one of the largest differences between head coaches in Super Bowl history as far as experience-wise. Andy Reid's been coaching forever. Nick Sirianni, brand new. And I don't love Sirianni. He's a high-emotion guy, very confident, very cocky. That's not the kind of coaching you need because you're going to get punched in this game. It's going to be a lot of jabs, uppercuts, counter punches, this, that. It's going to be a roller coaster. It's going to be up and down. And you got to have a guy who stays level. I know Andy Reid's going to stay level. It's absolutely insane. What the, the games are always crazy. Games are always crazy. So you can't predict it. You can't prepare for it. And Sirianni, you're vulnerable, man. If you're too emotional, you're too up and you're too down and you don't roll with the punches, you could let things spiral out of control. And this is the last team you want to let things spiral out of control with, the Kansas City offense. This is, let's get into it, the keys of the game. Kind of a weird game here. Vegas got this line at one and a half in favor of the Eagles. It's been the exact same for the entire two weeks. It's been set. The money's been coming in on both sides. Very even. The total's at 50 and a half. They bet it up from 49 and a half. So we're looking at a 24-21 game, 27-20 you know, it's going to be a kind of a lower scoring game, which makes sense with the Eagles defense, but they're kind of tr trusting that Chiefs defense to do a decent job against the Eagles offense. And it's kind of crazy here because we always talk about experience. It's usually the big time edge to experienced teams. I mean, three Super Bowls in four years, this is as much as experience as you're going to get. And a quarterback and head coach, it's massive. Eagles are still favorite because they're just so much better at 90% of the positions in this game. They have an edge everywhere except tight end and quarterback. And so that's the big difference here. It's experience and quarterback carrying the Chiefs close to this where the Eagles are the better team. They've been the best team all year. And it's just a really interesting matchup. But keys to the game here. If you're the Chiefs, you got to score early, get the ball first, and I think you kind of want to play a short game. You want to force the Eagles to have to score on every single possession in a short game. You give the Eagles seven, eight, nine possessions in the game, and you force them to have to score like six, seven times, it could put them in an awkward spot. They're not used to having to do that. They rely so much on the run game, so you get out early, force them out of that run game, make them throw the football, and make them play chase with you because they're not Super Bowl com super comfortable doing that. If you're the Eagles, though, you kind of want to do the opposite. You want to gate the ball. You want to keep Mahomes' ass on the bench. You want to grind this game out. You want to pound the rock and then attack through the air vertically off of that run game. Make the Chiefs feel like they have to throw the football. They have to catch up to you. Let your pass rush tee off. They'll get after Mahomes, and they'll force turnovers. Chiefs don't turn the ball over a lot, but the Eagles force a lot of turnovers, okay? Now, it's come back down a little bit, but they know how to get after people and make them super uncomfortable. So it's time. Got to make my pick here. I think this is a super even game. It's ridiculous. Both teams, one seed in each of the conferences, 16-3 and three on the season. Like I said, same amount of points scored. Both teams, six all pros, both the quarterbacks and both the Kelsey brothers in this game. We didn't even talk about it. it's the first brother matchup in Super Bowl history playing each other. I think it's an interesting game. I think it's a great game. I think it's a tight game. But let's roll the tape.
What are we waiting for? Take this! never out of it there it's a fantastic football team they're just a little bit behind my number one team but hey the Chiefs could easily find themselves hoisting the Lombardi trophy the Chiefs in a decent division we thought running away with this thing it feels like I just don't see anybody gonna be able to overcome over you know prevail when the chips are down it's Kansas City every day and twice on Sunday I think I said two weeks ago Bet it on the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. The Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl. I'm going to be floored. I know the Chiefs fans hate it that I say it. This is such a good football team. Now I think it's the Chiefs. This is going to be a dynastic run, hopefully, Chiefs fans. They're going to be at one. I do not see the Chiefs getting knocked off from this number one spot. This is the best team in football. This is a team built to have sort of a dynasty. They need to add a few more reigns. I'm thinking for sure this is the year. They're the only team I really, really trust in a playoff game in a big situation when things aren't looking great to turn it around to win the game to make the play i love this football team i'm still not selling my chief stock this is an elite football team i still think they're probably going to get this thing done this year and win the super bowl so if i'm a bad man i'm leaning towards the chiefs now with everything that's happened i would not be surprised if they're playing for the super bowl number one the kansas city chiefs the kansas city chiefs the city chiefs i the chiefs the city chiefs the chiefs kansas city chiefs the chiefs Chiefs feel Kansas City Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs here, Kansas City Chiefs. That's going to do it for us today. What an incredible NFL season it has been. I want to thank every one of y'all who've been watching throughout the season. The live streams, the power rankings, this, that, and the other. It's been a fantastic year. If you haven't already, drop a quick like on this video. Hit that thumbs up button. Really helps out the channel a lot. Subscribe if you're not already. New videos every single weekday giving you the need to know and news in sports. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Who is bringing home the Lombardi? Again, like the video. Subscribe if you're not already. Share this video with your friends. And I'll see y'all tomorrow.